I love the Word of God. And one of my favorite passages is found in the book of Revelation where Jesus says, behold, behold, watch this. I want your attention. This is important. Jesus is saying, this is important. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. We will have supper together. And supper was not just eating a meal. It was not eating a meal while you were watching your your uh, cell phone or eating a meal while you were watching uh, television. It's a, it's a time of uh, reflection. It's a time of celebration. It's a time of of great joy where you you bond with one another. So Jesus is saying to you right now, I want to knock on your door, and I'm knocking on your door right now. And if you hear me, and that's the key, do you hear the knocking of Jesus right now? Uh, the fact that you're watching this video right now, the fact that uh, you're uh, hearing what I'm saying means that you have heard the knocking of Jesus and you're walking with Jesus, and you're hungry for the Word of God. And so when we come to Hosea chapter 9 today, we find that there's silence. Uh, God is not knocking on their door. They don't hear his door, his knock. They don't hear his voice. They don't hear anything that's going on. And so there's silence, and we call that, in our terms, we would call that depression. We would call that a panic attack. We would call that PTSD. We would call that anxiety. All the different things that play with your mind and destroy your soul. So God has come and he is knocking on your door. Now, an interesting thing, an interesting aside that goes along with what's going on in Hosea, Jesus said that God had sent the prophets and you killed them. And then finally, God sent his son and you killed him too. And now in our age, God has sent his Holy Spirit and you ignore him or you uh, dismiss him or even worse, you curse him and say that we should not not in any way respect Jesus Christ at all. So God is coming and he's speaking to you today. And let's see what he's saying. I'm just going to read from Hosea chapter 9. Hosea chapter 9 says, Do not rejoice, O Israel, with joy like other people's. For you have played, and he uses a terrible word. He uses a word here that's translated harlot against God. You have made love for hire on every threshing floor. The threshing floor and the wine pressed shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail in her. They shall not dwell in the Lord's land, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt and shall eat unclean things in Assyria, and they shall not, not offer wine offerings to the Lord. Nor sh- uh, It just goes on and on and on. God says, if you don't watch, watch out, and if you don't respond to me, there'll be a, come a day when you will not respond because you will cannot respond, and I will turn you over to the satanic influence of this world. And Satan has come to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill your children. He wants to kill your unborn children. He wants to kill you. He wants to kill the history, the legacy of your parents and your grandparents. He wants to destroy everything and leave you standing there in the street as a common harlot naked for all to see. That's not what God wants for you. He goes on to say in verse 7, the days of punishment have come. The days of recompense have come. Uh, I believe that the judgment of God is upon the United States right now. And I believe the judgment of God is upon, upon the world right now. But that doesn't, doesn't bring me anxiety. That brings me great joy because I go to Matthew 24. I go to the book of Revelation. I go to Revelation 13. And I find that years ago, Jesus has already told us about this, that he's going to bring the large cities. He's going to bring New York City and Los Angeles and Chicago and even uh, uh, Tehran and Paris and, and London and Moscow. He's going to bring them to the ground, and he's going to destroy the commerce, and he's going to destroy everything. And only those who know the Lord Jesus Christ, who have offered to have him come in, you will have peace 
and joy during that time because you are dining with, you are having supper with, you have the power of Jesus Christ in you and around you. So right now, get into the Word. Listen to what the Word of God is saying. Listen to what God is saying. And how do we do that? Number one, we pray. Number two, we read the Bible. So we pray over the Bible. We pray with the Bible. Number three, we get together in church and we encourage one another. Don't try to do this stuff by yourself because what you'll be doing if you forsake the people of God and the church of God, you're going to end up out alone and there'll be no one to encourage you when you are down and you will not be able to encourage anybody else when they're, they're down. So it's very important to me that you get into the Bible, that you pray, and that, that you uh, get in church. And I'm talking about a church where they honor Jesus Christ. You get in there and you, you are faithful to the Lord. And as a result of that, I will benefit from that. You will benefit from that. And we will all be one family under Jesus Christ. And God will bless us even in this time of depravity and pain and anxiety and sadness and sorrow that we're living in today. Thank you so much, and God bless you.